What would you do if you no longer felt sick and tired? What if you woke up every day feeling amazing in your body and in your life? How would your life be different? You and your body are capable of incredible things. You have the power to heal. You just need the right tools and support. If you're ready to heal your body and feel amazing, tune into the Heal Your Body Show with host Dr. Jamie Gillum. Welcome to the Heal Your Body Show on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm Dr. Jamie Gillum, and our special guest today is my husband, Brandon. And today we're going to be talking about the truth about weight loss. I think that this is something that is not talked about enough, and there's a lot of misinformation online and in the health and fitness industries when it comes to what is required for you to be able to manage your body composition and your body weight. And what happens is a lot of people end up frustrated and feeling like a failure, feeling like they just can't do it because nothing seems to work for them. And it takes multiple things, all pieces to the puzzle for you to be able to manage your body weight and body composition. And if you're trying to lose a significant amount of weight, it takes time. And I personally don't like to talk about weight loss. I like to talk more about fat loss because your weight is going to fluctuate even if you're in a calorie deficit due to many factors. If you need to poop, if you need to pee, if you ate a bunch of carbohydrates, if you are on your period, if you are on medications that are causing you to retain water. So there's a lot of different reasons why your weight will fluctuate from day to day. And when we are wanting to change our body composition, it's more about fat loss. And there are many tools that you can use to track progress. And I feel like a lot of women focus on scale weight only. I think society in general focuses on the scale only. And there's so much more uh, that you can do to track your progress. And when you understand what the scale is telling you and the information it is providing, and you use it in conjunction with other tracking tools, then you're able to understand how successful you actually are uh, with your fat loss journey. So with that said, uh, I'm gonna introduce my husband. This is Brandon. Brandon and I met uh, in the fitness industry. He was a master trainer for a gym and a master trainer for Les Mills International, uh, which provides group fitness programming in the gym setting. And uh, when we first met, I think we both had the same misconceptions about uh, body composition and body weight management and what is required because of what we both were taught by fitness industry certifications and degree programs. There's just not a lot of information about what's going on in the body as a whole that can cause somebody to struggle. So Brandon, why don't you tell them a little bit about your own story and how you got, and how did you get in the fitness industry in the first place? Why don't you tell them that? Well, I, I found myself extremely overweight and, and by extremely overweight, I think that varies from person to person. For me, I was having trouble tying my shoes. I was having trouble playing with the kids and I just didn't have energy to do the things that I wanted to do. So, you know, I started like everybody else. I went to the gym, started working out and was focusing mainly on the scale like everybody does. But when that doesn't move, it's very frustrating. So you kind of keep hacking at it until something happens. Um, I think a better a better way to measure things is how your clothes feel and, and how you feel day to day. Um, <clears throat> so after I'd lost about 70 or 80 pounds, um, I got to be able, the, the opportunity to go to a, a master trainer course to be um, a trainer. And then I did that and traveled all around trying to teach other people how to lose weight and how to be fit and how to be active. But just like Jamie said, it was this old school mentality of it's just calories in and just calories out. And for a lot of people that works, um, but for a lot of people, it doesn't. So luckily enough, at that point in my life, that was what was working for me. Um, so anyhow, fast forward a few years, we owned our gym and um, I had a, a pretty significant back injury and had to have surgery. I gained pretty much all of that weight right back because I wasn't able to move without being in pain. I wasn't able to move without being really angry because I couldn't move. So I gained all of that right back. And it wasn't until, I don't know, December or January of this year that I decided I'd had enough of it. Um, so I went back to the gym and did the things that I did the first time. And that really wasn't working either. So 
um, now one of these people that calories in and calories out, that formula doesn't work for me either. So I have to have testosterone and I have to really watch what I do. And it's, it's been very eye opening um, as a former trainer to learn that the old formulas really don't work for everybody. Yeah. Well, and you saw what I experienced too right? with uh, thyroid cancer and having my thyroid removed and I was not properly medicated for my hypothyroidism. My endocrinologist kept telling me I was fine. My primary care kept telling me I was fine. I even went to my surgeon and my hematologist saying, please help me because I'm gaining weight and I'm working out six days a week. I'm eating well. I'm in a calculated calorie deficit and I'm just steadily gaining weight and I feel like crap. And they referred me back to my endocrinologist and I was simply under medicated for my hypothyroidism. And also after doing further lab work, uh, realized that I had very low testosterone and low progesterone. And then I was also diagnosed with lupus and Hashimoto's, which are autoimmune diseases. And, and, and once all of that was properly treated with no change to my exercise or nutrition, I was able to get my body back. And I will tell you that even now with proper treatment, my body does not respond as easily as it did when I was in my 20s or even in my 30s to exercise and nutrition. It's a little bit more work. Uh, for me to get the results that that I want to get from my exercise and nutrition, even with all of that treatment. And here's the deal. We live in a society where there's a lot of focus on dieting and exercise and eat less, move more. And the calories in, calories out model, that basically is focusing on your exercise and your nutrition. Uh, the less you eat and the more you move, you'll be able to lose weight. Uh, the reality is it is still calories in versus calories out. Uh, it is all about energy balance. And what that means is uh, when we, we are consuming calories, that's energy. So calories are just a measure of energy. And if you're in a surplus, you are going to gain weight. If you're in a maintenance, you're going to maintain weight. If you are in a deficit, you're going to lose weight. But there are many factors when it comes to energy balance than just exercise and nutrition. We have something called basal metabolic rate. That is the minimum amount of calories your body needs each day to function. There are many things that impact this number, your age, your weight, your height, your gender, your activity level, but also what is going on in the body. So if you have a thyroid function issue, if you have sex hormone or adrenal hormone problems, if you have vitamin and mineral deficiencies, if you have systemic infection, if you have a problem with your insulin, with your glucose and insulin regulation and also if you are struggling with mental health issues uh, there's so many things going on internally that will impact your energy output so we have energy input but then we have energy output also gut issues are very common in our society today along with liver issues one in three americans have non-alcoholic fatty liver and this is going to impact your hormones and your vitamin and mineral levels. And all of these things are intertwined. Uh, you'll hear me say over and over again, because I think it's so important for people to understand your body has 12 body systems. They all work in, independently and together for your body to function. So if you have a problem in one body system, it will create multiple problems within other systems within the body. And the biggest players that I have found when it comes to people struggling, even when they are exercising and managing their nutrition, we put them in a calculated calorie deficit. And the reason why I say calculated, we use a calculation to determine what somebody's uh, act, what, what their calorie intake should be so that they cr can create a calorie deficit. And we're calculating basal metabolic rate. And we can calculate that, but that's a calculator. You're not plugging your body up to the machine and it's spitting out a number. So it does not 
know if you are struggling with something going on internally that is causing you to struggle. So some big things that can cause somebody to struggle, even if they are managing nutrition and exercising, is medications. So a lot of um, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, also corticosteroids and pain medication. Also, if you are on hormonal birth control, hormonal birth control gives you a huge dose of estrogen and progestin to suppress ovulation. So we're disrupting our normal cycle and this can create a lot of problems, including weight gain and the inability to lose weight. Also, they can make you very hungry. So you're you're automatically going to be consuming more food if you're constantly hungry. And that's going to create a calorie surplus. Also, there are many other medications, diabetes medications, beta blockers. So whenever you're on a medication, I find that a lot of people do not read the package insert and they do not discuss with their provider about the side effects and things that are important to understand. And usually when it comes to treatment protocols, there are plenty of options available when it comes to treatment. And you want to play an active role. You want to ask questions and then you want to play a role in determining what medication is going to be best for you. What do you want to do with your treatment plan? And in some cases, there are holistic modalities that we can use in place of medication. Not always, uh, but there's opportunity to do so much with your treatment plan outside of just being told, here is this medication, take it in the morning on an empty stomach. I'll see you in a year. Uh, you need to do more research and you need to advocate for yourself. Um, so with that, you've got medications, you've got your big players with underlying health conditions are going to be hypothyroidism. So we know that 60% of cases are undiagnosed, meaning that they are not getting proper treatment. And the majority of people being treated by conventional health care are under medicated. They're on T4 only. They're not getting proper lab work. And this is going to affect their metabolism because your thyroid regulates metabolism. So if you have hypothyroidism, you must be properly medicated. Also, if you are in menopause, if you have PCOS or any other problem with your sex hormones, this is going to affect your metabolism. It's going to affect your muscle and fat distribution, uh, your ability to build and maintain lean muscle and your fat storage. Uh, when you're in menopause or you're struggling with PCOS, you typically will have more visceral fat versus uh, subcutaneous. You'll have subcutaneous fat as well. But visceral fat is much more stubborn when it comes to calorie deficit. Uh, so you might lose weight, but you're going to continue to hold on to that belly fat, which is so frustrating for so many women. Also, autoimmune diseases and inflammatory conditions, because this causes a lot of inflammation. So you're holding on to a lot of water weight, and then you feel like crap, your body hurts. So trying to work out can be very difficult for people struggling with these conditions when they're not properly managed. Also, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes and the medications for diabetes tend to cause people to struggle with their weight even more insulin resistance is becoming more and more common and it's directly related to fatty liver disease and the way the process goes it's insulin resistant then pre-diabetes and then type 2 diabetes so if you're insulin resistant now and you don't do anything about it the likelihood is you are going to end up with type 2 diabetes and the rates are staggering when we look at statistics most people by the age of 60 about 60 percent of the population is pre-diabetic by age 60. And there are many other things to consider when it comes to health conditions. We have structural abnormalities and genetic conditions and also many other health conditions that play a role. And many people are just unaware because fitness trainers don't have education in healthcare. The majority of them do not. Uh, so they just don't know. It's not necessarily that they're resistant to learning, which I think many are, um, but they simply don't know. They don't have enough information to tell you, oh, you're just not 
exercising enough and you're eating too much. Uh, so with that said, we're going to go to our first commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to have Brandon talk more on when it comes to lifestyle, what are the key factors involved with being able uh, to manage your body composition and body weight. And then we'll talk more about the medical side of things and what you need to know. So my name is Dr. Jamie Gillum. I'm with Brandon Gillum on the Heal Your Body Show on the Inspired Network. And we'll see you after this commercial break. Healing your body goes beyond simply taking medication to alleviate symptoms. While medications have their place in healthcare and can be essential in managing certain conditions, healing involves total body care. While not all health conditions can be healed, symptoms can be managed with the right approach. Integrative medicine considers not only the physical body, but also your mind and soul. Instead of just surviving, why not feel amazing and actually thrive? Dr. Jamie Gillum empowers you with tools to do just that. Tune into the Heal Your Body Show, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Heal Your Body Show with Dr. Jamie Gillum. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to jamie at jgwellnessclinic.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back to the Heal Your Body Show. I'm Dr. Jamie Gillum with my special guest, my husband, Brandon, and we're talking about the truth about weight loss. And here's the deal. I think that one of the biggest problems is many people do overeat and many people are sedentary. We are moving less and less as a society today. Many people work from home and you can order everything online. You don't have to do your own grocery shopping. You don't have to mow your own lawn or even clean your own house. You can hire people to do all of that. And people are moving less and less just to live day to day. So our non-exercise activity is decreasing over time. And this can result in a calorie surplus, which will cause you to gain weight. And we have drive through on every corner. We're constantly being advertised to uh, when it comes to foods that aren't the healthiest choices. And if you go to a restaurant to have a sit down dinner, the majority of meals are well over 800 calories and some go above a thousand calories. And then if you're adding caloric beverages to your meal, uh, you're going to eat a lot in calories and consume a lot if you're drinking a lot of uh, high calorie beverages. So with that said, yes, we have to look at nutrition and exercise. They will always be foundational and your lifestyle will always be part of being healthy and being able to manage your body weight and body composition. However, there is so much more involved on the medical side. Uh, but Brandon, tell us, tell us about what you think are the most important factors when somebody is struggling with their weight and it comes to lifestyle. What do you think are the key factors when it comes to movement and also when it comes to nutrition? I think that when it comes to movement, it doesn't have to be super sophisticated. You can get out and you can walk around the block. You can go for a bike ride with your kids or you can throw the ball with your dog. It doesn't have to be super sophisticated. You don't have to follow, you know, um, a, some bodybuilding plan that you found online. You don't have to go to, you know, a, a group. Actually, you don't have to do anything that's very um, regimented. You just have to get out and move. And, you know, some small things you can do to start is park your car at the back of the parking lot of the grocery store and just add a few extra steps when you can until you get to a place where you can move more. So I think just making that conscious effort to get up and move a little bit will help. 
because like Jamie said, our lives can be very sedentary with the, the availability of online shopping and groceries and all the things that you can do now. Um, but I have a very active job throughout the day. Um, I work construction, I'm about building decks, so we're lifting and moving and crawling and all these things, yet I was still gaining a lot of weight. So very, very active, still gaining weight because whenever I got home, I was sedentary. I didn't do much. So that leads me to the, the, the diet portion of it. Um, if you really want to lose fat or lose weight, you have to make a conscious decision to eat just a little bit better, a little bit at a time. So I think Jamie and I are both on the same page when we started off with our clients that I don't want you to cut out all the bad food right now at this minute and never touch it again. Because if you're accustomed to eating drive through two or three times a week, it may be pretty hard to break that habit. So pull back a little bit and then walk around the block at night. And then maybe in a month you pull back a little bit more. And now you're running around the block. And then maybe the next few weeks you're pulling back a little bit more on your fast food and adding in some more things like vegetables and proteins, lean meats, and now maybe you're lifting weights. So it doesn't have to be today's all or nothing because I think that's where a lot of people fail. They want to change their entire lifestyle overnight. And that's extremely hard to do, whether it's overeating or whether it's exercise, or you're trying to stop smoking or trying to stop drinking. It, those are habits that your body gets into and craves that you just can't drop. So I think people get frustrated when they've been at it so hard for a week and nothing has happened. Well, one, you didn't gain that weight all in one week, so you're not going to lose it all in one week. And are you trying to do too much at one time? And it's overwhelming and it's frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I like to say, this is how my brain works sometimes. Uh, it's kind of like going to get a degree and if you go get a degree or you sign up for any kind of program, uh, you got to put in effort before you get your certificate, right? So you have to show up, you have to do the work. Sometimes you might get an A, sometimes you might get a C, sometimes you might fail the assignment. Sometimes you might be sick and you might not make it, but you have to be consistent and keep showing up before you ever get that degree or certificate, right? And that's the same when it comes to any kind of weight loss journey. You're trying to change your body composition. We have this idea where we want instant gratification and we think, well, I have been eating so much better this week. I've been moving, I've been tracking everything and nothing has changed. And it simply takes time. And we are promised so many quick fixes online by people selling all kinds of crap and also magic potions, right? And there are many things that can be an assist, a catalyst whenever you are doing all the right things, but there is no magic solution that is going to cause you uh, to change your body composition, your, your body weight instantly. And if it does, then you're going to gain it white right right back because there are things that will cause you to lose a bunch of water weight. For example, if you prep for a colonoscopy, guess what? You're going to lose about eight pounds uh, because you are literally pooping everything out and you're going to be dehydrated and that's going to cause your scale weight to drop. Your tummy might be flatter, but guess what? The minute you eat after that colonoscopy, you're going to put all that weight back on and it's not fat loss. That is simply water weight. So I think there's just a lot of misunderstanding about what fat loss is in the first place. And also we have a lot of people online showing their workouts and showing what they eat in a day. And sometimes I sit back and think that trainer, that fitness influencer, she's not doing those workouts that she's prescribing. She's not eating that every day. And when you've been in the fitness industry for a long time, there are certain things that we know uh, based on somebody's body comp. Um, you know, if you want to be lean with muscles, you have to lift and you have to lift heavy. Uh, there's just certain things. We also can notice uh, when somebody is on performance enhancing drugs, there are some telltale features 
um, that give us a good indication if somebody is taking performance enhancing drugs, which leads me into this. Um, I'm not against performance enhancing drugs. Uh, many people in the fitness industry take them to achieve a body composition that they cannot achieve naturally with exercise and nutrition alone. And I think what is so incredibly frustrating is these are a lot of the same people that want to argue with me whenever I talk about hypothyroidism, hormonal conditions, all of the underlying factors that can cause somebody to struggle if they are having something going on internally in the body. And they will take hypothyroidism medication when they don't have hypothyroidism because it increases metabolism. So they're able to maintain a lot of muscle and cut weight at the same time. And they can still eat a lot of food. So they will take thyroid medication. They will take testosterone. They will take Winstrol, um, Clenbuterol, and a lot of other performance enhancing drugs um, to increase metabolism, to affect hormones. And it's alarming that yet in one breath, they'll say, well, that's okay because I'm doing the work. But then in another breath, they'll say, well, it's not your hormones. It's not your thyroid. You're just overeating and not moving enough. I've been kicked out of Facebook groups uh, for talking about this. And, um, and specifically in one where the group was for fitness competitors and everybody is on performance enhancing drugs and or the majority of people in there are. And I got kicked out of the group by simply talking about how it's not just about um, how much you're eating and how much you're moving. There's so much more at play. And with that said, that's the thing with Brandon. Brandon was falling asleep in the recliner and, you know, he just had low energy and he was tired all the time and his body hurt. And we were starting to go to the gym, but he was just struggling. And obviously it was difficult because he hadn't worked out in quite a while. So just having the motivation to go is terrible when you're not used to going you have to get over that hump but also when we put you on testosterone you stop falling asleep in the chair and you have more motivation that gave a big boost of energy because my testosterone was now it was down i don't know under 200 it was super super low and i did have low energy i had enough energy to go to work and do my job and come home and be tired mm -hmm. and you know i was going to the gym because i knew that i needed to i wanted to jamie wanted me to and I would go and I'd ride the elliptical for 15 minutes and go, well, I did my part. I'm just going to go home now and then be, you know, super frustrated when nothing was happening. So, you know, I think for most people just to get started, you know, because a lot of this can be pretty scary when you start talking about taking hormones and replacement and treatments and thyroids, it can be a lot. So what I would suggest to people is go to the gym and start off simple, start moving and start eating a little bit less and give that a like a really, really honest try. Not just, well, I sat in the parking lot and I went to the gym. Like go in, do a little bit of work or walk around the block, cut your calories a little bit and see what happens over the course of a month. And I would almost say, don't even look at the scale for the first month. Pay extra close attention to how your clothes fit, your shirt, your bra, your underwear, your pants. How do, they, how do you feel when you bend over to tie your shoes? Are you able to walk up the stairs without pausing anymore? What, how do you feel? Because a lot of those indicators are indicators that your body is changing, even though the scale may not be budging all that much. So I think, you know, our weight fluctuates, mine fluctuates about, you know, six to eight pounds or so daily. And <clears throat> as long as I'm in that window, I know that I'm maintaining. Mm -hmm. it, it's all okay. Lately, I'm staying in that window, but my clothes are fitting a little bit looser around the waist. I just bought new pants. I'm going to have to buy some new ones because I've, I've lost some more of my butt, I think. I'm not real <laughs> sure. Um, but, you know, I'm putting in extra time and eat uh, extra time in the weight room. I'm hitting extra protein during the day. So hopefully I'm putting on some muscle. So I'm gaining some muscle and shrinking some of those fat cells. Um, because as Jamie alluded to earlier, you know, you're you're really looking for fat loss. You're not really looking for um, weight loss and our bodies have a certain amount of fat cells so really all you're doing is shrinking those cells you're not losing them it's all still there and that's why when you diet down super hard on some of these fad diets you lose a bunch because you shrink those fat cells extremely rapidly but when you eat a normal diet again or what you were eating before those fat cells expand back out to where they were born.
or or more or heavier. Yeah. Well, you put yourself right back into a calorie uh, surplus if you do a very restrictive diet. Because the minute you stop it and you go back to your old habits, if you don't have a sustainable plan, then you're going to put yourself into a surplus. You're going to gain inflammation and a lot of water weight, and then you're going to gain fat back and it's going to put you back right where you started. That's why so many people, especially women, go on fad diet after fad diet and they have success, but they just can't sustain it because it's not a sustainable plan. So we're going to go to our next break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk more about the medical side and lab testing and what you need to know if you're struggling. Uh, if you are, if you know you're doing all the right things or maybe you, you don't know, maybe you don't know what to eat, you don't know what to do because there's so much conflicting information online. We're going to talk about that after the commercial break. My doc, my name is Dr. Jamie Gillum, and I'm with Brandon, uh, my husband, on the Heal Your Body show on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll see you right after the break. Healing your body goes beyond simply taking medication to alleviate symptoms. While medications have their place in healthcare and can be essential in managing certain conditions, healing involves total body care. While not all health conditions can be healed, symptoms can be managed with the right approach. Integrative medicine considers not only the physical body, but also your mind and soul. Instead of just surviving, why not feel amazing and actually thrive? Dr. Jamie Gillum empowers you with tools to do just that. Tune into the Heal Your Body Show, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Heal Your Body Show with Dr. Jamie Gillum. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to jamie at jgwellnessclinic.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back to the Heal Your Body Show. I'm Dr. Jamie Gillum with my husband, Brandon. And today we're talking about the truth about weight loss. So, you know, we all, we've already talked about things that can really impact your ability to manage your body weight and body composition with exercise and nutrition. We talked a little bit about lifestyle, uh, our own personal struggles. And here's the deal. It is very overwhelming. If you are not really implementing quality nutrition and movement, and you're not managing your stress, which is another big factor, and you're not getting adequate sleep, you're not getting eight hours of sleep a night that is uninterrupted. Uh, these are things that matter so much. And also uh, with that, any underlying medical condition that needs proper treatment. But you may say, this is a lot. Uh, I've got to track my calories. I've got to understand macros. I've got to exercise now. And I just can't do all of this. It's too much. So, you know, like Brandon was saying, just start easy. Uh, general weight loss is not complicated. Uh, it is a science and you have to be consistent. You have to give yourself time. But at the same time, if you have certain body composition goals you are wanting to achieve, you have to dial it in uh, so that you can achieve those goals. And in the beginning, it may be that you're just starting to move more. If you're only getting 2,000 steps a day, try to get 5,000 steps a day. And once you master 5,000, then increase from there. And if you're driving through five days a week, uh, maybe cut back to four days a week and replace one of those meals with a healthy home-cooked meal. And we also have different ways to get convenient, healthy food in our society today. So you don't necessarily have to cook this whole 
um, you know, big glamorous meal, uh, there's a lot of ways that you can add convenient, healthy options into your daily life. But, you know, simply start with simple, uh, small changes over time. And as you master one change, then you can add another change and you just progress over time. And I think we really have to stop focusing on the scale. You can focus on your waist to hip ratio. You can focus on how your clothes fit. You can focus on your body fat percentage and the scale. You just have to understand what the scale is telling you. The scale is telling you how much your entire body weighs. That's your muscle. That's your fat. That's your skeleton. That's your water. It's it's a lot um, and you can take one person that weighs, say you have a woman that weighs 150 pounds and put her next to another woman that weighs 150 pounds at the same height and they have completely different body compositions. So I think as women, we are constantly stressed about the scale. And I think many women just need to throw the scale out the window because it causes so much stress and anxiety. And also we in our society, I think this affects women more than men, but I think men may struggle with it as well. We are constantly being advertised to, to stay young and to be a certain size. And there is just a lot of stress uh, put on women when it comes to our appearance. And there's not some magic size that is considered healthy. I struggled with an eating disorder most of my life, and I was very tiny. I was like a size four, uh, two to a four, and I was pretty lean with a six pack, and I was not healthy at all. I was under so much stress. My body was stressed because I was restricting my calories so much and over-exercising, addicted to laxatives and diet pills doing everything possible to stay small. And my whole life revolved around it. it. It affected everything that I did. I couldn't enjoy anything. And I'd be carrying my food. If I went out to dinner with people, I had my food in a container because I was that obsessed uh, with staying lean. And that was just a mental health issue. Um, and, and I've been able to overcome that. It wasn't until my late thirties that I was able to overcome that. Do men struggle with that as well, Ed? I think a little bit. I think men struggle differently with, with aging and, and different things as far as weight and looks and appearance go. Mm -hmm. Um, I think most men can get over, um, like right now I weigh about 220. I have no problem weighing 240 if my waist to hip ratio is right, mm -hmm. right? If I, if I could put on more muscle, I don't care what the scale says. I just want to be um, a little bit leaner and more muscular. And when women would come in to me as a trainer and say, I need to weigh 127 or 130, my first question would be, why do you want to weigh that? Well, because I would be a size two. Well, we can make you a size two, but you might weigh 10 pounds heavier than you want if you do this the correct way. If you can shrink your fat cells or lose fat and put muscle on, you're going to be just a little bit heavier, but you're going to be leaner and you're going to be healthier is the main point. Because um, I like what you said about you can take two people, same height, same weight, male or female, it doesn't matter. And they, they look, they can even look the same, mm -hmm. but one person's um, uh, body fat is much higher than the other. There's that, what's the term? Skinny fat, mm -hmm. right? So you can, you can look healthy. You can appear healthy. You can wear the small clothes or the cute dresses or whatever it is you want to wear, but you are so unhealthy that you should probably be admitted to a hospital. Mm -hmm. and, and on the other hand, you can also be super lean and muscular and active and still be unhealthy built that way, mm -hmm. depending on what you're putting in your body to get you to that point. So, you know, it, it's a, like Jamie talks about a lot is, is a very holistic approach. You've got to incorporate all of your body systems. You've got to get your blood work done. You've got to see where all of this stuff, um, how all your systems are operating to make your body perform the way it should. Um, but I, I, you, I like my brain works in analogies just like yours does. So if, if I, if my car is supposed to get 30 miles a gallon and all of a sudden now it's only getting 15 or 20, I take it to a mechanic and the mechanic's going to say, Hey, you need spark plugs or air filter or the tires. There's about a dozen different things that can cause your car not to perform the way it's supposed to perform. 
And if a mechanic told you that, you would fix it so that your car ran right. So why not go to someone who could say, hey, your body systems are not working the correct way, so you're not going to metabolize food the proper way. Mm -hmm. So go to the expert who knows how to do it and listen and put into action the things that are supposed to help you feel better. Exactly. And, you know, that's that's the thing is when when we believe strongly in building muscle. However, if you're just starting out and you're not moving much, you just want to start with getting more movement in. And that really depends on your evaluation and can you support your own body weight? You know, can you go ahead and start lifting? Some people need to start doing bed workouts or chair workouts, uh, using a TRX to provide some support and stability and then progress from there. But muscle takes up less space than fat. Uh, and this is why somebody who has more muscle mass uh, they're going to weigh more uh, than somebody at the same size uh, who has more body fat because muscle is taking up less space. It's kind of like if you put a Milky Way next to uh, a bag of cotton candy, right? Um, it's taking up less space and you want to be picking stuff up and putting it back down and squatting throughout the day, bending over, picking stuff up. You know, that's one way that you can just start moving your body, dance around your house, you know, put on some music. If you got a trampoline, go jump on the trampoline, go walk around the block with your kids or with your partner and just start moving and then progress from there. So when it comes to I'll say something real quick. Yeah, go ahead. So whenever I started back at the gym in December or January, whatever it was, all I did was ride the elliptical or walk on the treadmill because I just needed to move. I had not moved my body in a, in an exercise modality in such a long time. I wanted to lift weights, but I knew that I should not do that just yet because I had not been exercising. Mm -hmm. So I, I started just walking or just doing the elliptical. And then I would do a couple of weightlifting exercises just on the machines so, and then ease my way back into more of a, what I like to do as far as weightlifting routine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you have to start slow. You, like you said, you can't just jump in if you haven't been doing it because then overuse or injury or something might happen that'll set you back further. So yeah, just walk or pick up your house or mow your yard or I don't know. Pick right. up your dog or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, and then you call it progressive overload. Yeah. As time goes on, uh, you want to be making sure that you're changing uh, your routine so that your body is still getting that stimulus and able to respond. It's not adapting. And so if you do have goals uh, over time, your workout plan will change. And that can be as simple as just increasing weight loads with your weightlifting or changing up the, you know, the sets, the reps, also duration. There's a lot of different factors involved with progressive overload. Now, when it comes to nutrition, Brandon, what are some things that people can focus on with general nutrition if they don't know where to start? Um, I think first, most people know down in their heart of hearts, you can't eat pizza and cheeseburgers every day, right? So one, stop fooling yourself that that you're doing okay when you're not. Um, and for a lot, like for my profession, I'm out on the road. I've got to stop at gas stations. I've got to, I, I, unless I pack my lunch, I have to stop somewhere. So make healthier choices. You might have to eat a McDonald's, but order the cheeseburger and throw away the bun. And it's not the carbs you're throwing away. You're just cutting out some calories because you would rather have the protein than than the carbohydrates, right? So make healthy herb choices a little bit at a time. You don't have to cut everything out at once. Um, water, if you can drink um, up to a gallon or so of water a day, mm -hmm. that's gonna help make you feel better. It might get rid of a little bit of indigestion. It might flush out some toxins. It might help you be less puffy. Um, and oddly enough, drinking more water will help with water retention. So you can lose a little bit of water weight if you'll just drink some water, mm -hmm. similar to how your, your toilet bowl works. You flush your toilet, it fills the bowl up with water and it flushes all the rest of the water out. Oh, right. So that it can work, right? Yeah. Um, I, so as far as diet goes, you've got to figure out what works for you. Um, everybody wants to jump on kilo, keto or paleo or the South Beach or whatever it is. And yeah, you're initially going to lose some weight because you've drastically undercut your calories. But if you do not like fish, 
the South Beach diet, probably not your thing. If you don't like steak, one, that's weird. Two, <laughs> don't go paleo, right? right? You've got to find something that works for you. And that's the same for exercise. If you don't like running, don't run. I don't run. I don't. If I'm <laughs> running, you better look behind me because somebody's chasing me. Right. Um, you've got to find um, a diet lifestyle that you can do indefinitely. Mm -hmm. I love steak. I love chicken. I love all that stuff. So I could eat steak every day. No problem. Fine with me. If you don't, then find something that you do like. And it might take a little bit of hit and miss to figure out what you land on that is actually really good that you can have over and over and over. And you know what? If you want a piece of pizza, eat a piece of pizza. Mm -hmm. Just realize you can't have, you're, you're taking from your calorie um, budget for the day. Right. Right. So, you know, we like to go out. I don't know where everybody's at, but we're in Texas and chips and queso and enchiladas are delicious. And so are margaritas. So, but you've got to factor that in. If we're going to go out Friday and have dinner, then maybe my breakfast Friday is a little bit lighter. My lunch Friday is a little bit lighter. And Saturday, I might cut into Saturday too, depending on what we do. But you just, you've got to keep that rolling number in your head that I'm going to eat this today. I know it's not in my budget, but I got to make room. I track those things, but I don't track my meats, seafoods, and green vegetables, but I track everything else. And uh, and we still have a great time. We love margaritas. We, we love having a good time going out to restaurants, uh, but we know how to manage that. And that's where it can easily put you in a calorie surplus if you're not tracking and not management managing it. I like to do weekly totals. So I have my daily total goal and then I have my weekly totals. That way I can manage throughout the week based on if we have a party to go to or what we have planned for the weekend. Um, so those are all great tips, babe. Uh, I love like if I go to McDonald's, just a side note, as he was talking about McDonald's, I can get a happy meal if I'm really wanting the, the whole burger and it's about 400 calories. So, and I can have those fries too. I just have a smaller portion and I don't eat that every day of the week. It's just like a treat. So those are some things just to, to think about when it comes to nutrition. And there's the fad diet is not what's working for you. Uh, any diet that you are on that is working is simply putting you into a calorie deficit uh, using certain tools. It's just a tool. So it's not that there's one diet that works for everybody or it's the diet itself. It's just putting you in a calorie deficit by giving you tools that you can implement. And it's not a one size fits all. The general uh, foundational things for weight management uh, there are general things that we all should be doing, but then inside of that, what works for each individual person base, is based on where you live, like your cultural background and what you like to do, what you don't like to do and your mobility, flexibility. Do you have a disability? There's a lot of things involved with what's going to work for you. So we're going to go to our next commercial break and then we're going to wrap it up. And I am going to get to medical conditions and how you can know if there is a problem and you need lab work. So we'll get to that uh, in the next segment. My name is Dr. Jamie Gillum. I'm with guest Brandon Gillum on the Heal Your Body Show on the Inspired Choices Network. And we'll be right back. Healing your body goes beyond simply taking medication to alleviate symptoms. While medications have their place in healthcare and can be essential in managing certain conditions, healing involves total body care. While not all health conditions can be healed, symptoms can be managed with the right approach. Integrative medicine considers not only the physical body, but also your mind and soul. Instead of just surviving, why not feel amazing and actually thrive? Dr. Jamie Gillum empowers you with tools to do just that. Tune into the Heal Your Body Show, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Heal Your Body Show with Dr. Jamie Gillum. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to jamie at jgwellnessclinic.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back to the Heal Your Body Show. I'm Dr. Jamie Gillum with guest Brandon Gillum, and we're talking about the truth about weight loss today. So here's the deal when it comes to what's going on within your body. As Brandon said, uh, as he was talking about if your car is not running well, you take it to a mechanic to get diagnosed. 
your body is like a car. It's a machine and you've got so many moving parts, right? And if you are struggling, you need an evaluation. And one of the biggest problems in conventional care, minimal labs are ordered and then you're told you're fine. The provider typically doesn't walk through your labs with you to explain uh, what is indicated in your lab work. And a lot of times we're just relying on a healthcare provider to tell us that we're fine. You need a thorough evaluation and you can start exercising. You can start um, eating to where you are in a calculated calorie deficit. And if you are not seeing results within an expected time frame, you need lab work. You need to check your thyroid. You need to check your sex hormones, your adrenals, your vitamin and mineral levels, your inflammatory markers. And you need the basic lab work that they typically run, which is a CBC with differential, a CMP, a lipid panel. You also need an autoimmune screen if you are struggling with symptoms of autoimmune disease and a systemic infection screen. Also an A1C and fasting insulin is uh, also included in my hormone panels because I want to look at uh, your glucose. I also want to look at your fasting insulin. And this gives us valuable insight into how your body is functioning metabolically. And I can see in somebody's lab work when they are struggling because of an underlying health condition. And I get contacted by fitness competitors all of the time who have been competing for years and all of the sudden their body is not responding to their exercise and nutrition. And it's because typically they're entering into perimenopause or menopause and this is changing their body composition and it's becoming much harder for them to manage uh, their body composition. And some of them are not able to step on stage because they need hormone replacement. Uh, many people with hypothyroidism need proper treatment. And we always want to look at the body as a whole. So we want to include lab work. And you can start with lab work today. If you need help with that, you can book a consult through uh, my website, jgwellnessclinic.com, and I can order your lab work. We can go ahead and figure out what's going on from the get-go so you have the best uh, ability to get results with your exercise and nutrition. So you want to incorporate lab work and understanding your labs. You want to incorporate holistic care. You want a multivitamin and you want to make sure your vitamin D is optimal, uh, that your DHEA is optimal. And going back to testosterone real quick, because we talked about it earlier, not everyone needs testosterone replacement therapy and not everybody wants to do that. We do have an epidemic of young men with low testosterone in our society. And then as men age, their testosterone will decline. So will a woman's testosterone. But you can increase testosterone with lifestyle, with strength training, with protein, with adequate vitamin D, and also with an adequate level of DHEA, which is a precursor to testosterone. So there's a lot that we can do holistically. And then if you would like to do hormone replacement and you are a candidate, then you can always add in hormone replacement as well. And then we want to incorporate lifestyle. I also want to mention that mindset plays such a huge role. And if you have trauma, if you do not cope with stress well, it is going to hold you back. And if you are not in the right mindset when it comes to yourself and your body, and you do not have realistic expectations, it is going to cause you to fail over and over again because you are going to feel like it's not working, you're a failure, nothing works for me. And instead, you have to shift your mindset. I, I would tell you the number one thing when it comes to what to expect, focus instead, instead of focusing on body composition and your body weight and the scale, focus on getting stronger, focus on building stamina and endurance, mobility, flexibility, being healthy, fueling your body with healthy foods and managing your stress managing your sleep, making sure that you're getting eight hours of sleep at night. Don't run on very little sleep because it's just going to cause 
a cascade of problems each day throughout the day, you're going to be tired and you're not going to expend as much energy. But if you can focus on the non-scale victories and let the weight loss and the body composition change be a byproduct of you focusing on healing from the inside out, you're going to have great success. Brandon, we have about 15 seconds. You want to add anything else? Um, when it comes to calories and the scale, you want to, with your calories in particular, you want to track daily for accountability and weekly for progress. Yeah. Right. And the Thank same you for listening scale. to the Heal Your Body yeah. Show. All right. We Dr. are going to see you next week on Monday the Heal Your Body Show. 2 p.m. Show. Eastern, 1 Thanks, p.m. Brandon. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, give your body the time and attention it deserves to unlock the power you have to heal your body.